right, so we got into a mess this morning. We got to work and this is all a lake. It was an actual lake when we got here. This all water backed up from this hillside of running. Well, it ain't hurting nothing unless you need the wood. See, that's what's concerning me, but I'm figuring you'll make a plan. Well, that's all wet because this ground's been blocked. That's mostly, well, a lot of that's wet too because I pushed some of it off the hill. That's why I was saying you can throw that out of the way and stockpile if you wanted. I think I can take all them maples and some of them ash and I'll pad this up right in front of me. Okay. Well, I'm sitting on an undercarriage right now. Oh, I know. <laughs> this was bad this morning now. I got enough good dirt. You can almost have some of this good dirt on your side if you can make a... We'll save it to go on top of what you pad. Yeah, let me pad okay. it we'll put the dirt over top of my You pad. throw your shit out of there then? Well... To where that stuff ain't contaminating or good? It's deep. It was over my tracks a while ago, so I don't know if I'm, that's going to be a hell of a... I'd hole. make a pile, stockpile it there as you pull your stuff out, stockpile the trash there, and then I'll bring you the good dirt. I guess you can sit on it here and swing it over there, can't you? Why can't I just leave everything like that and then put my my, my pad on top? Think I'll be good and enough. Then put the dirt okay. on top of my pad. If you got enough confidence in that, there's yep. a lot of maple yep. there yeah, though. A lot of maple up in there. I'll bring Brutus down here in a minute and hand you stuff. I ought to do that too, oughtn't I? It don't matter. All right, we'll set this here right here. So Stevie's going to start fixing this from here. The other side of Stevie is a mess. She's deep. Yeah, it's it's very deep. It's, it's like crawl horse it's, it's deep. It's, it's deep, deep. <laughs> Look how deep this is. This, this is where my track was. This is an undertaking. Derek's uh, honing on the stumps. It's it's an undertaking now. This is one of them deals where you earn your daggone keep. And I get asked all the time, the question I get asked all the time, and no offense to the people that ask it, I get asked all the time, why don't you run chains in your skiers? And it's because this is our struggle. It's not rocks, it's mud. It's deep mud, and uh, it, 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 it's it. That's our struggle. And when you're running swing machines, it really helps with the stuff that takes chains. It, what, what you end up with more struggling with the main skid road. Oh, I know. Done blue chain. What do you think about here? Once he gets the stagger and he can do some good there, can't Well, he? this big old stump's gonna screw him. I can dig that dirt back and you might be able to 
knock some more off but of it. It'll be deep. Yeah. Yeah, when I get here, okay. But by that point, if When I, he starts climbing, he needs to be on dirt. Well instead of wood. Once he comes off of that bridge, he'll have two tiny wisps to wall around if you knock that stump down by the time okay. I use all this trash, he'll have plenty of room to walk. Okay. He's probably gonna need every bit of it. Okay. This is a saw. And the reason we're gonna be hauling out of here is because, is because them trees are so big in the bottom, we can't climb this hill with the skidders. It take, and we got a problem down there anyways. We gotta fix our seat problem. We got a seat problem. Too much rain this summer. That's just our dilemma. We gotta fix this seat problem we got down here. Then we can start moving production. I mean, when you're padding up and you're making padding, oh, that's a good shot down through there. When you're padding up and you're making your padding, maple, hard maple, that's your best friend. It's got the right amount of hair, the fuzzy, and the right amount of backbone, and, and, and maple just works great. Maple's a good one. Beach, small beach is a good one. It's gotta be small beach. Maple beach. Eh. That's pretty much it. But I love using maple. Hickory, smaller hickory. Maple and hickories are two MVPs. But in our area, we accidentally grow maple. We can, you can slip fall down and grow three maple trees here. So you always got a readily availability of maple. Got a lot of maple here. We're not a cold enough climate to grow real good fancy maple. But we do okay in spots, and uh, and we grow a lot of it. You're constantly fighting down maple when you're doing your when you're doing your stuff. You're constantly fighting down maple. Gosh, what a what a bottom. So here's so here's the plan in a nutshell. Down where the bridges are setting, what that is is the spot where the water from this whole bottom makes out right beside the ditch, right beside the big creek there where we made the Ruby Redbone Bridge. Uh, if you ain't seen that, check the last video out. But the, the right, right there against the creek, there's a berm. And the water, and I don't know why it does what it does. Uh, if I understood erosion, I'd understand why the sediment builds there around the ditch. It happens a lot in these bottoms. I don't understand it. But what the, what the result is, is right against the ditch the ground's high so then all this you know because everything down below this is all sandy ground everything down below this hillside uh, uh, look at the left brutus up there that hillside that's all sand sandy ground so all the bottom where stevie's at over the you know gazillion years has turned into sediment down there that's where we're setting the bottom well, that traps water back here, and it holds water, and it's like a great big sponge. So, to let the water out, where the bridges are set, where these temporary bridges are set, and that's the lowest spot. Excuse me. <clears throat> that's kind of the lowest spot where the water can drain out and get to the big ditch. So, when we come to work this morning, we plugged that on accident. Uh, driving through there or whatever, making some ruts, driving through there early on. We screwed that up on accident. And we come in this morning, there was a freaking lake in there. It was like, holy cow. I mean, it was bad. It was like two foot of water. I can't believe I didn't record it, but there, but I was probably too upset to record it. Um, you know, with the situation. But, so first thing I done, 
I got Stevie down there at the Den Den. I said, Stevie, it's bad. Get down here. Uh, we're gonna have to. Uh, it's gonna suck because because we're not moving wood right now. We're farting with this. But I said, we got we got us a, a dilemma coming on. We're gonna have to, to cap it off. So first off, first order of business was to drain that water hole, which is right. It got drained right where them bridges are sitting. <clears throat> so we, we we drained Ruby Redbone Lake, <laughs> and now we started on the getting these bridges in, getting a crossing made to hold the bridges up out of the mud, so the water can still drain underneath the bridges back to the Dagon Creek. Well, meanwhile we got logging to do, so we're padding it up and making a corduroy ro corduroy road. Look it up if you don't know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Me and Stevie's got to make a corduroy road heading from this bridge to this soft, spongy ground. I mean, when I say spongy, I mean spongy. And when you kind of make a corduroy road, you're putting your big stuff down the bottom because that's what gives you flotation. And you put the fuzz up top, and that's what gives you the uh, matting. The fuzz, anytime you're putting a corduroy road down, you start to big, and you, in the top, you ended up with, in the top, the road the tarmac, so to speak, ends up being small fuzzy limbs. And maple's great, beech is great, hickory's great for that because they're strong and they, you know, they hold up good for that. <clears throat> and what it does is that fuzz holds your big pieces together on a corduroy road. So that's what we're kind of, so there's a lot of sorting, a lot of farting around. It looks like, well, what are they doing? They're just wasting time. Well, no, it's actually, you got to place it properly because there's a lot of wood coming up out of this thing in the next couple of days. The next couple of days, all the wood is coming out of here. And Tiny's got a, I, we got, now Tiny don't have forestry tires on it. Tiny's got radial tires, which helps with the soil disturbance. Radial tires helps disturb disperse the load better than bias ply. And look that up if you're uh, young and you don't understand that or whatever. Just look it up. The difference between radial tires and bias ply. And you'll see how the contact patch on a radial tire is better than a bias ply. So that's why we've done what we've done on tiny. But the problem is it don't have the puncture resistance of a forestry tire. Because forestry tires have to have puncture resistance. So <clears throat> through lesser to evils, and overall that's the best on tiny, but what we got to do is make sure that there's nothing to puncture tires. So when we get all done with all this, Big Daddy's probably going to take a little bit of dirt and put over the top of our fuzz that we got. See how Stevie's it, shaking it off and getting it a little bit everywhere in different spots to tie things in. So when Tiny gets to run this, you won't be able to tell what's built underneath the dirt. It just looks like Tiny's driving on dirt. It's livable, but it ain't. You're gonna need your mats, and junkyards gonna need to move around. Yeah. Probably need, I mean, take, probably need to take some more of that and shove that stuff back, so he's got plenty of room to. Yeah, it was back better before we pulled that sycamore out. That way, he's not just making one big yeah. rut. He can yeah. chop it around. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That Roger, all right, making his pile there. It ain't. Yeah. I mean, none of it's beautiful. I know that, but we got to go from all the way back here. All the way around, and, yeah, and it's all sucky. Yeah. Well, what Big Daddy was concerned about was chewing that bank up on the other side. That's fine. I got it built way up. Uh, it's it's like a holy crap bridge. I think uh, her ball's wife or whatever's supposed to come down here and yeah. lift all that. Yeah. She's a sweetie. She'll be all right. Did you see the big freak up there on the corner? Uh-uh. 
You can see the hole. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh my God, what a mess. It's going in the creek. So is the other one. You can see the bow in it heading out. Yeah. That big red oak over there is marked too. And it's, but now that we're already on the other side, maybe we can just go ahead and dump them in the creek and pull everything that side in. Okay. But that big one up there, yeah. it's there a bit of six, seven foot on the stump. <laughs> and you're probably going to be 12 to 15 foot on a springboard on yeah. the lower side. Before that would be there. cool. That it's, would be cool. It's going to be real sketchy if somebody cuts that. Big Daddy's going to leave it. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I'll see if I got the balls for it. Uh, but you're right there. I mean, I won't reach it with anything, but it's going to be slow cutting. I should probably cut down and let Derek have all his flat down here is what I should do, shouldn't I? Yeah. I'll just start up there and then come across clean. And then these down here will have to come down towards you. And then I'll try to keep as many of them as I can up there. So we got less in this hole than we have to have. I wouldn't worry about it. We're already down here. Good point. Man, you've turned this into something on this other side now. I think it'll work. I was, it's still a hole right there where my track's at, but... Get a little dirt in there, it might not look up so bad. Yeah. And it's tiny. As soon as he gets off the bridge, he can meander back and forth. out of the way and grab my saw.
talk too much. You talk too much, you worry me. Yeah. Well, that's what I was starting to do. We had to work together on the other side, though. Sucked. We had to. There's a hose on a 648H that, holy cow. Yeah. John Deere. What the F bomb. The one straight off on a 648H, John Deere. The hose straight off the pump goes over to some kind of, looks like an accumulator, but I don't know what it is. Like a big hot dog. It stays shoved down underneath the batteries. You gotta pull the batteries out just to change the hose. Oh my gosh. G3 suck, but there's nothing like that on well there's stuff like that. Hoses suck on, on John Deere skitters. That's all there is to it. But we got this done. This is made looking good. Stevie and Big Daddy worked on it while me and Robin changed the hose. Derek is over there cutty cutting for Raji Dodge and he's skidding across the uh, Redbone Bridge and he's stacking here for Stevie because Tiny's gonna haul these trees up. Now we're going up on this bank up here because it's some nasty laying situation there. Might have to hand cut a bunch of that. Might have to hand cut that section there. The rest of it I can cut Brutus, but I don't know. Might have to sling saw, sling pudding on that hillside there but up there i know i can do that brutus too i don't know i don't think that could be done without a chainsaw i don't know uh, uh, uh. all right let's get to work robin's up there filling his fuel stevie's up there you see him swinging up there he's loading junkie and finishing up their stuff it, breakdowns suck, but at least the way we've been logging, at least when you get broke down, it don't stop everything. There's enough extra people. We can always move people around and keep the wood moving, which is crucial right now, this time of year. All right, you see what we're going through. One thing I want to clarify in this situation, in any situation, and you know, a lot of time, and I don't care those of you that dog on me for the silly things I do, that's fine. Teach your own. Um, but one thing I wanted to <clears throat> try to stress to everybody is this channel is logger weight, it's not timber cutter weight, it's not truck driver weight, it's not, and, and it don't even need to really be about weight, it's about logging, it's about our company and what we do logging. Um, and sawmilling, excuse me. But there's this is what it is. This video right here is typical of what logging is in our area. Cutting timber will get you killed. <clears throat> you don't do it right, it'll get you killed. And dead loggers don't log anything. And they leave families behind to pick up the pieces. But what you deal with throughout the day and what hangs you up in the woods is logistics so many people misses that with my channel I feel like when they comment and stuff it's like they'll get on me you know like and don't get me wrong I love all the comments and, and at any level whoever's watching this at any level you're in 
comment, say something. I can help you or you can help me at any level. You know, the simplest guy out there has got still got plenty to teach me. And I want to create an environment to where, hey, boy, listen to me and teach me something. That's the selfish thing I'm getting out of this channel. And that's the selfish thing I'm going for in this channel. I want information. I want to soak it all up. I'm a very open... Um, my personality, one personality trait I have is very openness. I take pride in my openness. That's what I take pride in. I want to massage that part of my uh, personality. Because that that's the selfish part I'm taking out of this channel. Now the... The unselfish part of this channel is that I'm sharing with somebody, somebody else. So somebody that it, it, at any point in time that wants to learn anything from what I'm doing, there it is. Take it or leave it. You know, decipher, do your deciphering yourself to decide whether you like it or not or whether you want to um, take any information I got to the bank or whether it just make you broke, you know. But I also want a place where I get taught plenty too. You know, I have with making these and stuff like that, I don't have enough time to research on YouTube's to watch other people like I need to. There are so many smart people on YouTube's to learn from, and it sucks that I don't have the time to get through to do it because I'm stuck in my time preferences high right now, and has been for years. And it looks like four years it will be my time preference is going to be high. But if I had a lower time preference, I could learn from other YouTubers like I need to. But anyways. I just wanted it because this right here, this type of situation is what we deal with in the woods. This. Logistics. Getting it out. So many new loggers come out there and they, they get all bottled up on, you know, what kind of notch you make in a tree or something. You know what I mean? Or we're going to, oh man, you need to do this type of cut. You need to drop this part down. I'm like, dude, you're in kindergarten. This the big boy. Get up here. How you gonna move that tree out of that hole? All right, let's say you cut it. Say, you're freaking Chainsaw MacGyver. I cut this tree down perfectly. It is so perfect. I'm gonna take pictures. Pajit, Pajit, Pajit. I'd take the best pictures of this thing. I am the best timber cutter ever made. Well, all right, dumbass. Get the tree out of there. Get it to the mill and sell it. Or in our case, get it to the mill, saw it up, log it, log it, haul it to the mill, saw it up, sell it, all that stuff, and get good price out of it for lumber. Do that. Then brag about yourself then. Let's see it. Because when you get beat up through all them other parts of the puzzle, that is parts of the puzzle that somebody has to do. Because if you're going to sit there in your simple little mindset, and that's what you're going to focus on, you better hope somebody's on the other end doing that other stuff for you. So you got to, I've had that luxury. Uh, Mom and Dad's done that for me from when I was a kid growing up. And they're still there doing it for me now. But they're, they ain't going to be always going to be doing that for me. I got high time preference. I got to pop, pop, pop and move on. I don't have time to, to romantically fall in love with some kind of professional cat on a stunt. You know, I've been there, done that, moved through it. I don't do it perfect. Hell no. Is there people out there better than me? You damn straight. And they're all over YouTube. Uncle Bucking, Cotton Top, uh, Nutsy, um, and a bunch of the Western boys. There's a bunch of Western boys that I'm not into on YouTube that, that's better. You know, and there's a hundred of them out there better than a longer way to cut timber. But let me tell you what, I get bulled through them, I get them on the ground, I move on. Boys, we got them, we got them remove them, we got to set up a spot to get them out. There's all the logistics. You know, staying staying alive and cutting your tree properly, that's step one of 20. All right, I'll shut up. Have a good one. Everybody, thank you for watching. Thank you for being involved in the channel. I love it. I love the interaction. And I'm so happy to get to do this for everybody and to get what I get back out of it. The comments, the emails, the, the daggone... The stuff on Logger Wade Fun Time. All, all, all of it. All of it. Love it. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. And everybody, don't forget to smile.